If you're feeling like God has, you know, withheld love from you or whatever it might be, trust Him, not Him for what you want. Trust Him, and in trusting Him, you trust His timing, you trust His character, you trust His heart. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. If you're walking uprightly, if it's good for you, He's not gonna withhold it. And when it is good for you, He will reveal it. You know, it's so funny because a lot of single women are told, you know, lower your standards, your standards are too high. Uh, but you know what, I had a friend who told me something that I believe is the truth that trumps those statements. And she said to me, she said, and she had gone through hardship like I had in the past, and she said, I'm telling you, this is the mark of you knowing that it is the Lord. The Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask, think, or imagine. And she began to brag about the relationship that God had sent her way that she was currently in. And she said, I'm telling you, this is exceedingly abundantly above. Like I had my list, I had the things that I wanted, but God superseded it. And so I think honestly, and I'm not saying that we're just called to look at somebody and less and go, God, I want that, I want him, you know, in that way, no. But God, I want great, I want what you have for me. And what he has is above that. And I think at the same time, we are called to keep our standards up when it comes to how we live, the morals that we adhere to. Um, my husband and I, we were very intentional about making sure that we remain sexually pure throughout our courtship, our dating, you know, so that we could make sure that, hey, we have the stamina to go through the test of sexual temptation on the front end and after we say I do. So my husband didn't touch me in ways that he wasn't allowed to. We did not sleep together. My husband did not spend the night at my house, you know, while we were dating. And there were nights that we were talking for a long time and maybe one o'clock and he's like, I'm not spending the night on the couch. I'm going away uh, so that I can say, and you can say that I presented you to the Lord, like the Lord presents his bride, you know, without spot or blemish. So, you know, he honored me in that. And I'm saying my standards were high, his standards were high when it came to that. And not that they were just man's standards, but they were God's standards. And we were like, Lord, you said that we can do every season. We could do all things because you would give us strength. And he gave us the strength to do that. I just gotta tell you, my husband is fine. He is fine, so temptation was real, okay? But greater is he that was in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me and in you than our flesh and our temptations, okay? So make sure that your morals are high, your standards are high, and at the same time that you're expecting for God to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask, think, or imagine. I think, you know, we have to trust God, period. I think sometimes we are wanting to trust uh, the answer that we want. And so we're believing God for something instead of believing God. And so I think when I start believing God and his character, that he is good, even when bad things happen, um, the fact that I can trust even his no. Sometimes I can trust his no more than his yes, and I'll explain that in a minute. But when I begin to, to trust him, then it's easier for me to receive the things that happen in the middle and the in-between, even when he says, ah, that's not right for you. And I'll say this too when I was saying about sometimes we can trust his no a little bit more than his yes. I'll explain because I know it kind of sounds like a contradiction. But as a parent, you know, I have kids and there are times that my kids would ask me for something. And if I were to say no to them, my no was like, no, I'm protecting you. It's not the right time. It could really harm you. It's not good for you. I know you're six and you really want to drive the car. No, you can't. Trust my no. It is for your own good. But there were times when you know, I gave them a no and they kept pushing and kept pushing and kept pushing and asking to where eventually I was like, I've told you what the consequence would be if I give you a yes. Are you sure you wanna deal with that consequence? Are you positive? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. That I gave into something that they were safer with my no than with my yes. Just like the children of Israel, when you know they asked for a king, God was like, it's not a good idea, not a good idea. They're pressing for a king, give them a king. It was not for their betterment. So my point is there are times God will close the door. He will close the relationship. He'll make sure he doesn't call you back. He'll make sure that, that you're saying, God, if this is not you, then God's like, okay, you can fast and pray. But every time you fast and pray, you're gonna break up, you know? That we can trust God's no. Um, and that, that no comes with protection. It comes with his favor. It comes with, you can um, rest in my timing. And sometimes we want things ahead of time, but it's not the fullness of time. Again, if I give my child a car at the age of six, 
I can say I love my child all I want, but that's not good for him. But if I say, okay, you can wait for the appointed time, at the appointed time, what was not good for you back then may be great for you at the other time. So God is good for that. He's good in those relationships. So if you're feeling like God has, you know, withheld love from you or whatever it might be, trust Him, not Him for what you want. Trust Him and in trusting Him, you trust His timing, you trust His character, you trust His heart. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. If you're walking uprightly, if it's good for you, He's not gonna withhold it. And when it is good for you, He will reveal it. I remember we had had a season and, um, well, some of it was distance dating because he was in another state and I was too. And so we would FaceTime every day and that's a whole nother other story. But this is one of those things that really let me know that he was a man of God and God had put his seal of approval on him. We were, things were going well, everything was great. And I was like, Lord, I thank you because I finally feel like I'm experiencing love redemption. This is what I've been praying for. This is what I've been believing for after decades of of hardship in relationships, you know. Um, I know what it's like to be abused and betrayed, and so I've had experienced that for just a long time. And so now I was in a new season, and I'm like, Lord, this is a brand new relationship. This is godly. I feel your presence. I feel your pleasure. And the Lord told me, he said, I remember hearing uh, inside my heart, are you willing to lay it on the altar? And that was so hard for me because I remember wrestling with God for just, it was probably a span of a few minutes actually, but it just felt like an eternity. And I was like, Lord, like for real, like after all of these years of being in a loveless relationship and, and all these years of having the struggle and all these years of having somebody who's finally honoring me in a way that I know you'd approve, in a way that I know my dad had prayed for. And all of a sudden I started hearing reminders from what I had read in the scripture of you know Abraham when God had asked him to sacrifice Isaac. And he was like, oh, I'm willing to do it because I know what God has promised me. And I know that even if I sacrifice my son, God will raise him from the dead because God had not yet fulfilled what he had promised. And so I said, okay, Lord, like with tears, I choose to lay it down. Not because my hope is in this relationship, but because my hope is in you. And so I remember going back to my uh, husband who wasn't my husband at the time and telling him saying, you know what? The Lord told me that right now I need to lay us down. And we hadn't had a fight. He didn't do anything out of character. He was being as godly as godly could be. And I said, the Lord has asked me to lay it down. And his response was, I've been praying for a woman who would love God more than she loves me. So you do whatever God tells you to do and I'll be here. Like I'll be waiting for whatever God says. And in that response alone, like, it gave me the peace to know this is a man who is not just after me, he's after the heart of the Lord. He's after the approval of the Lord. He's after the ways of the Lord. And even in that, him, you know, and so it was like about a three day span. We both fasted and we prayed. I cried and cried and cried, honestly. The first day I was just, you know, the, the to worship God we had spoken about before is oftentimes accompanied by sacrifice. And the sacrifice is giving up something that is costly, something that hurts, something that is valuable to you. And at this point, it was a culmination of years of what I had desired, years of what I had prayed for from, for God, from God, years of what I had been singing about and declaring, and now God said, sacrifice it. And when I did, God eventually said, now you call him, now it's time. And um, just knowing that I had his seal of approval and he was right there and Every single night without fail, every single day, he has prayed over me. My husband, he has covered me from the time we dated till even now. He still prays and covers me, and he is a man of God, so, yeah. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.